Oh, hey, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Now you can make sound. It said you were connecting to audio. You're still okay. connecting. There you are. Okay, I think I figured it out. You just have to wait. For Amanda? Right. Can you, is my audio, am I loud enough? Yes, for me. Okay. I have headphones in though. Okay. Is my audio sufficient? Yeah. Okay. Indeedy. Indeedy. How are you? You look ticked off. We should probably not speak until. No. no, I'm not ticked off. I have a lot of thoughts going through my mind at the moment. That's good. That's not. That's not a bad place to be mentally. To have a lot of thoughts. Oh, I can't. Oh, hey, there's a man. Hey, Amanda. Who, how, I was going to say, who are you? I meant, how are you? Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Is everything no? all good? Wait, here? yes. All right. Hello, sorry I'm late. I'm, oh, that's okay. I am in need of some sunglasses right now. That's how I'm doing. Oh, really? You're cheating? What? Wait, you're in need of sunglasses? Yes, and I'm wearing them. <laughs> I'm very confused. It's a euphemism. <laughs> I heard about those. They're, they're euphemistic. Indeed. Euphemistic euphemisms. I don't know which way is the best way to watch this. I just keep y'all's head, keep seeing y'all's heads bounce back and forth. Oh, That's well, yeah. I don't know what you're doing because all y'all's heads are staying in the same place. And like for the ah. folks, the 16 folks out there watching this, <laughs> the 16 amazing folks, it's going to look probably the same the whole time. Okay, I have, I have a few questions. Wait. Hello. Welcome to Conversations in Sunglasses. With me, Glenn Clark, him, Nick Aston, and her, Amanda Williams. We're going to talk about lucid dreaming today, allegedly. Whether or not mm -hmm. we actually do or <laughs> stay on topic is a mystery. Who knows? Because I do zero planning. I pride myself on zero planning for conversations and sunglasses aside from who's going to be here and apparently what we're talking about this time. But that was your idea, Nick. Yeah. I think, unless it was my idea. I actually believe it was your idea. Oh, well, good. Uh, but good. I did have a question. Did y'all want to hear another riddle today? I'll let Amanda decide. Or um, it's a Nick riddle, so do I want to torture everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's always the I real mean, question. I know. I mean, we did it's, last time. It's a weapon to wield. We did last so, time. Let's do it. What you got, Nick? Riddle. Okay. Riddle me this. Batman. Okay, here's an easy one. You're, you have two rooms. One room has light switches that you can flick on or off. There's three of them. Right. But anytime you leave that room to go into this room, which has the light bulbs, the switches all have to be, oh, sorry, all have to be facing the same way, whether it's on or off. Whenever you leave this room, it has to be on or off. You come to this room, there's three bulbs. Which light switch connects to which bulb? I mean, does it matter? Yes. Like why? Why is that important? Why would anyone need to know? If all <laughs> I you know. The you need to off, label. Off. I mean, you just 
Wait, you what? need to label these lights so that people will know which ones do what. They turn on and off, right? That's what lights do? Yeah. Yes, but what's one, what's two, and what's number three? But if they number all have to be is... on at the same time, does it really matter? Only whenever you leave. So your job is to go figure out which light connects to which switch. How do you do it? I mean, you turn one off and on and see which light turns off and on. Yeah, alternatively... There's a wall could... that you can't see. <laughs> so you could turn one on, but when you leave to go make sure that that's the right light, you have to turn it off. So you go to that room now, that light is, all three of those lights are off because all three of the switches are off. Okay. Or if you go into that room, turn all three switches on, you leave, you go to the other room, all three lights are on. Can you, like, call someone? Be you like, can hey. flick them as much as you want while you're in the room. But when you leave, they have to be in the same direction. When this door is closed for your light switch room, there is no... Oh, it's a breaker to... box, isn't it? Kind of, basically. Okay. Okay, that... I'm not an electrician. I didn't, like, pick this life. It's easy to do. Yeah. When you know the answer. I mean, what, you just flip a switch and go see what it did and then come you, you back? Can't do what, you can't go see what it did. Well, then... It's in Wait. two different rooms. Oh, you can't leave the room you're in and then go into that room and then come back to the room you were in? All three light switches have to be in the same direction. So... Yeah, but if, that doesn't answer if, my question. If you turn one light on, uh -huh. you have to turn all of the lights on when you leave. You can't leave... With one light on, one light off, one light on, one light off here, it has to be all three lights either on or off. So if you do leave this room to go into the other room, you will either see everything is off or everything is on. So you can leave and come back all you want, but all the lights are going to be on or off. This riddle has inspired well, me. With yeah. This Can you hear the screams from like people yelling about the, the lights being off? Are they coming from different areas? Oh, I really forgot what rooms. you wanted. Well, and what was the question? Yeah. Also, in my dreams, like light switches never work for me. So, never? Never. Never. Like, Sometimes I can flip them don't. and like. They just don't do anything. Same with locks. I'm like, mm, shitty locks everywhere. Right. So, I don't think I've had that problem. Wait, like, I saw the riddle. I, you shoot yourself and you die and then you rise up above the building and you look at everything and then you get resuscitated and you write you look at the... Well, I guess you can only do that once unless you become a poltergeist. Anyway... Continue. I don't, can you like call someone that is in the other room and no. why no, not? There's no other people. We um, live in the now. There well, are people this is your job. Up the whole this is your job. And put an out of order sign on it. Why didn't the electrician label things when he like went to install this? Why is it my job? Yeah. Can we label well, them? You can ask your spirit part? guide that. You, you hmm? can ask your spirit guide that question there. No, you can't label anything. I thought we were supposed to be labeling. Not like yeah. that. It has to be either this is for light switch one, this is for light switch two, this is for light switch three, and well, then the three bulbs have to be labeled one, two, and three. Or whatever order it may be. I don't know because 
you're dumb. <laughs> that doesn't work. I don't really think it does dumb. work. It's possible. It, it's very easy. But speaking about dreams, you said that light switches don't tend to work. I don't tend to notice light switches in my dreams. I've only encountered locks once or twice, but all of them were easy to get past. Um, See, I'm always trying to lock the door behind me. Really? Yeah, because it's hmm. such a habit in real life. Oh. But in dreams, like, things will get through my my really crappy dream locks. Oh yeah, I understand. I never use Lux yeah, in dreams. I don't know. I get chased a lot. Oh, me too. I have nightmares about so many. everything. I used to only have nightmares. Yeah, there were so many zombie apocalypse dreams in like the early two thousands, two thousand ten. Sorry, I blamed The Walking Dead and the zombie craze at the time. I, I only about fighting zombies with Zach. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. I'm always like the last guy standing. Always running. Yeah. Don't have that experience. And like when you run and your feet are too heavy, do you have that? No, I've had no. That once or twice. I have friction. I can't run because my feet aren't making contact with the ground. I'm just like I'm on a treadmill. You're like a cartoon, just like running in <laughs> yeah, midair and trying to go. Or it's really heavy, and I'm like really slow, trying to push, trying to push, and I'm just not getting anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. A lot. Which brings us to lucid dreaming, in which case one might take control of that because yes, lucid yes. dreaming is a tool maybe, to get out of nightmares. Yeah, and you can't get like in a lucid dream, that's when you figure oh. out you're asleep. So that's speaking true. of speaking of getting a lucid dream, uh last conversation. For those who watched, uh, Glenn and I decided we were going to try really hard this last month or whenever we last recorded an episode to have a lucid dream. And I did have a lucid dream. Uh, did either of y'all? Do you want to talk about a lucid dream experience? No, that's the topic. <laughs> that would be boring. Okay. Let's okay. <laughs> so like... I don't know what was going on. Who was? Anyway, was I, I attempted to have a lucid dream, but unfortunately, I've been really tired. So my dreams have been pretty not that vivid lately. Do you ever get so tired that your whole dream is about being tired? And yes. It's hard to find somewhere to yes. go to sleep. Yes. I hate those. Like, I'll be dreaming and my my character will still be doing stuff, but my eyelids are super heavy. <laughs> I'm like, uh, right. I'm here. Boy, no. Oh, oh God. Okay, oh. yeah, I'm doing stuff with my eyes closed, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where I'll end up? Yeah. You never know. Like, I have those, but then sometimes it happens in real life where I'm doing stuff. But I'm so tired. <laughs> like just my eyes. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Because it's <laughs> dangerous and you could have died. Right, I guess you're right. It. It's funny because it's terrible. <laughs> it's how you cope. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Return to oh, car right. crashes. <laughs> Wait, what? Ever dream of car crashes or being in a wreck or having an uncompleted highway just pop out of nowhere? Not I mean, that isn't that all highways? <laughs> in Dallas, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, don't worry, we're having construction. Just, just. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, just kind of springboard your car, <laughs> launch your car over the bridge before the middle yes. of the building. Into it. We're good at that here in Texas. <laughs> That's how we actually drive. <laughs> Yeah, you know the leaning. What's the bridge that goes up and down and wherever? The bridge to Terabithia. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, did That's you have a lucid, lucid dream? Uh, yeah, Nick, did you have a lucid dream? I did. So. Did it hurt? <laughs> It, it was very painful, you know, getting to it. I tend to only remember my dreams more often during the weekends because I don't get enough sleep during the week. But this one, let me just tell you the contents, the best way that I can say it, which is difficult. Uh basically a little motorized bike someone had one somewhere and they were driving it around and then it turns out that the battery died or it just stopped working for this guy so he was just going to walk the rest of the way around somebody brought brought it over to me i took the battery out put it back in you know because sometimes you get a little bit more use out of the controller if you do that uh -huh. So I got it to work and I was driving it around. I was headed back to this guy's vehicle, which was way down there. And as I was part passing a street, there was a guy and he like picked up a car and threw it up in the air. And I was like, OK, that's strange. Uh, I'm just going to keep going this way. That doesn't concern me. I got a little bit further and I saw him again and he looked like someone I know. Mm -hmm. um, so I went over towards him and he was about to jump a fence and I was still on this little motorized bike. Wait, is it relevant who he looked like since it was someone you know? Not necessarily in this moment because the place that I was sleeping was at work. So I was around work people. Okay. So my dream went to specific people oh, that I needed to God. talk to but before or after my nap. Um, so he went to jump a fence and I was still on the motorized bike. So my instinct was to do something I had done before. So this was just like a thought in the dream. Yeah. I should go jump over that fence because then I can just start flying because that's what I did my first lucid dream. Right. So that Wait. thought that I could run into the fence and fly was a previous lucid dream experience that I had, uh -huh. which was on a bike that I attempted right. at my first lucid dream of riding my bike down this hill and trying to jump off and fly once I realized I was dreaming. Uh, but I didn't do that thought. Instead, I said, stop. And the character stopped and turned around and I was like, yes, I, I, I know I'm lucid, but then like I woke up. So, so it was you didn't know not was long lucid until the end of the dream yes okay the moment i realized it was a lucid dream without having to do a reality check because most of the time i have to do the nose test yeah um but it was just something that i just knew uh and then moments later I felt like I was sitting in my chair or wherever I was laying mm -hmm. and I could feel being there, but I couldn't move my body. So 
I don't know. Oh, like that, um, dang, what do they call that? Sleep paralysis? Yeah, kind of. I hate that. That might have been what it was. Uh, That's what you're talking about. tired anyways, so so I just went right back to sleep. Like. I can never do that. Didn't want to mess with it. I was like, whatever. That's convenient. Of course, you go to sleep easy. I don't, I don't know. But did you go back into lucidity? Nope. Remember nothing else. So during the week, if I get a nap, I'll typically have a dream, uh, which just means I'm not getting enough sleep regularly. Uh, I guess my body does not like six and a half hours. Um, yeah, that's not do. natural. For most you do. Yeah, true. One moment it's six o'clock and then it's 10 o'clock and you're like, dang it, I got to go to bed. <laughs> that's just it. I don't sleep anymore, but <laughs> that's why I'm insane. Lost my freaking mind. Well, have y'all had a lucid dream recently? Yeah. She already... Didn't you already answer? I mean, you I haven't started. had one. I've had I one know. this year, but can't really remember it. Hmm. Do you keep a dream journal? I sure do. I need to I've... start doing that. This is mine. Sweet. It's a little chubby I have, boy. I have yeah. mine in the, the bedroom on a notepad. But you don't keep a dream log, Glenn? No. Because I'm always too tired. Oh, man. <laughs> They're fun. <laughs> you can even draw little pictures of them. Uh-huh. You know, for some reason in my dreams, the toilets are really high sometimes. They're like ridiculously high. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, but I, since, the, draw. <laughs> since we started trying, I had one lucid dream and I hadn't had them in a while since I murdered my spirit animal <laughs> or whatever. Um, but i mean it was really like a simple (laughs) dream because i think i was just doing the test because i was trying to be habitual about it during the day so then while i was dreaming i was just walking into my library and i just did the test i'm like oh wait i can breathe through my pinched off nose therefore i'm dreaming therefore I can do whatever I want. And I was like, oh, so I'm going to make somebody show up on the couch and just have a conversation. Then I was like, wait, I can do that in real life. Why would I waste a dream just making someone show up on the couch to have a conversation? I can do anything. And so then I was just sitting, standing there trying to think of what, else I could possibly want to do and I couldn't think of anything and then I woke up (laughs) oh that's so bad when you got to fight with yourself yeah you got to go in with intention be like when I'm lucid I'm going yeah to shoot some magic fireballs out of my fingertips (laughs) right that's what I used to do I used to be very disciplined about that like, like that's something I did, I used to write was not like a report of a dream I had, but my intentions for if I go Lucy, I would write them down and that would help me focus that intention. I guess it just wasn't there this time because I hadn't had one in so long. Yeah, I, hadn't, I wasn't really thinking about when I am Lucy, I will do this. I was thinking about, I must become Lucy. So... Uh. Next time I'll have to, I have to get back in that habit of like writing it down, like write out the scenario. See, 
you don't do even have to write it. You, you don't even have to write it like right then. Typically, I write it at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of recap what I remember. You know, sometime during the day, I will make a quick note to myself so that whatever I dreamt will be remembered. So I wrote small snip- snippets of a dream uh, and then left work wondering what was that dream about last night mm-hmm. i know that i remembered it mm-hmm. but i spent 15 minutes before i looked at the note to see if i could just recall what it was and i i couldn't it was gone but i pulled out the note there was maybe six words r- written on it and i remembered the entire dream so that's one of those a good like, recall system. Yeah, definitely. Hidden key type thing. Just it's it's strange how one thing can trigger a whole zip file. Power. Yeah. Yeah, it is like a zip file. <laughs> hmm. but. So what was your first lucid dream? The first time you ever went lucid in a dream. I mean, I almost told told mine already. Yeah, you told about the bicycle. Um, but you I, I can tell you like what caused it. Yeah. All of okay. Because I mean, most of the dream is is not really that important to the scenario, uh, but it deserves a little background. So, Glenn and I uh, oh, used to go. Mean biking a lot around the lake yeah. so being around Glenn causes me to do reality checks <laughs> uh, I get that a lot <laughs> uh, so um, riding around bikes so I was on a bike in my dream going from point A to point B mm-hmm. did a reality check uh, and then realized I th- I am in a dream. I can do whatever. I was going downhill uh, and saw, you know, a ramp at the end. Was like, I'm going to jump off that ramp and kind of crash the bike and go flying. So I did that. Uh, when I was in the air, I f- levitated for just a split second and then woke up. And that was it. I woke up what about you amanda well luckily for me a symptom of adhd Mm -hmm. is lucid dreaming and i I have reason to believe i've been doing that since i was a child like i've been flying around and doing Uh stuff going on i don't know dream adventures you know you know they you know they declassified another one or classified another one another. Uh, like ADD, ADHD, and they have ADOP. You know about that one? What's mm-hmm. that one? It's attention deficit. Oh, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Huh. Oh, well. I mean, I don't understand the difference between ADD and ADHD. Like, really? Well, I, I'm in one is hyper. I am not the hyper kind. It, they're all considered ADHD, but there's okay. like, there's the female kind of like very yin, chill, daydreamy type. That's me. Other people. Then, like, I can't sit the still for a very long the... time either, but. Yeah. Oh, oh well. Oh, well. But yeah. I started being lucid about my lucid dreams when I was a teenager. Okay. When when I found out they had a name, I guess. I'm like, yeah. oh, I want to have some of those. And mm-hmm. those were a lot of fun. Oh. You know what? Like, I don't know. Did I tell either of you this story on a conversations and sunglasses about the the alien spaceship? dream 
it was off camera, but okay. I share. don't remember. I know. I think I've. Yeah, I know. I've told you. Like, like, yeah. So if it's not on this, it's not redundant. So like, that was technically I learned because you mentioned learning the word or the mm -hmm. term lucid dreaming and then becoming aware of what you were doing. Like, I actually learned the term in a dream in a lucid dream <laughs> and then i found it um online like i i googled the term and it brought up exactly what had happened to me <clears throat> didn't you learn something else too in that dream or was that a different dream um i don't know that you, you learned another word or another place uh I don't remember the exact scenario. Uh, oh, well, uh, there was one. There was a pretty epic lucid dream. I'll get to that eventually. Well, <laughs> but this one, um, it, the whole dream was I just, I woke up on a spaceship. And like I was in this tube. Um, oh, hold on. Something popped up. I don't want to gift. Why? Oh, right. We only have a 40 minute time limit. Okay. I accept that. Gift. There, I forgot if there's three people, they put a time limit. What are we at? 40 minutes, but they just offered to lift it so we can do whatever. Um, right. So I wake up on a spaceship. And what does that say? Oh, dang. Okay, wake up on a spaceship and the people tell me I'm not supposed to have woken up. But then it's like I wake up and everything starts fading. Like I remember the world, but it's like I remember this world like it was a dream. And I start remembering where I am, that I'm supposed to be in like cryogenic sleep. I'm on a long space journey. And like the people who were awake were like, you you're this is yeah that was all a dream but it's a community dream everybody's plugged into it and like you're supposed to only wake up when your character dies and then we refresh you in your next shift like you have a shift when you're awake and doing things on the spaceship and they're like so you know like people down there in that world who um like Jesus and people like that, like people with godly powers that tend to start religions are all lucid dreamers. And they're just messing with the dream because they figured out they're asleep and they can do anything. And I'm like, okay, interesting. So it's all a dream. We're all in the same dream. And Jesus is a lucid dreamer and those like him. And then they were like, no, you've got to go back. You're not, it's not your shift. You woke up prematurely. There was like a malfunction, but then they put me back under and then I woke up. It was weird. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I'm me again. And like, so it was kind of backwards, but then I eventually, I Googled that term lucid dream. And that's when I learned, oh, that's an actual thing you can become aware of your dream. And then I was going to UPS in a dream where I used to work. And I was going through like the check-in line where they scan you. And I was arguing with people in the thing to let me through that my uncle Larry had built UPS and that he'd built this whole entry thing. And then, you know, while I'm mid rant, I was like, Uncle Larry didn't build UPS. What am I talking about? And then I figured out that was the first time where it's like, I know what a lucid dream is. And I am apparently having one. And then I started confronting people about, you know, what they are. Like I tried to comprehend the fact that I was dreaming and make them understand that I was dreaming. But then I woke up. So, no, I didn't. I thought I was thinking two separate, separate dreams, but it was actually one dream because I left UPS when I figured out I was dreaming. I was like, I don't have to go to work. Whatever. 
this is a dream. So I went into like a mall and I went up to just some random dude at like a, you know, those beauty counters where they sell makeup and perfume and crap. Well, one of those little kiosks, I just saw him and I'm like, okay, I'll go ask this guy. I'm like, all right, this is a dream. You're just a manifestation of my subconscious. What do you represent? And he just looks at me and goes, well, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, you're clever because you're me. I'm really just asking myself the question. So my subconscious is a smart ass is what I'm saying. <laughs> that was my first um, lucid, lucid dream. Uh, oh, I remember a dream where I became lucid. Do tell. And then in the dream, I don't know where I was, but like you were lucid. I stumble time. into lucidity all the time. You do what? Well, not all the time. I stumble into lucidity. I'm like, oh shit, that's not normal. Yeah. I'm in a dream. But this time you were there and I was like, hey, Glenn, guess Me? what? I'm lucid. <laughs> and you're like, and I was like, okay, guess he's not astrally traveling with me this time one day it's interesting that i've shown up in both of y'all's lucid dreams well i associate you with um, part of my lucid dream journey cool like what do you think do you think that the dream realm is on some level astral like that it's not just in your head but your if your consciousness is outside of your head you know like mm -hmm. if you know if you go to does the brain generate consciousness or does the brain receive consciousness is it you and so like if you think it receives consciousness and like then the dream world is out there it's not in your head so if that's the case, then do you think it would be possible to like in spirit or disembodied consciousness form to travel into somebody else's dream consciously? Like if you become lucid, you know, you're a dream, you're in a dream. Could you conjure a doorway that literally led into your friend's like, dream? Hey, hey, dream yo. You'll have to try it. You might need like a, a something to remind you to do all that yeah i have to write that down. Have, um i have had success with like crystals surprisingly enough like if i keep them on my person and i'm like okay y'all are my dream tokens so if i am dreaming and i find you in my pocket that's pretty cool right interesting they show up like <laughs> crystals See, I have so many questions about that because you, you can know. use a rock. It's whatever you like, whatever, whatever, sh like vibes with you in the form of earth. Okay, got it. It's just another form of like, hey, you might be dreaming. You have those rocks in your pocket. You should check your surroundings now. Uh, yeah you're awake type thing like I, I tried to do trees as my dream you tried to do trees symbol. yep because Whatever you see trees you everywhere you see trees everywhere there's any time you're outside you're probably going to see a tree right unless you're one of so, those desert people right so, just kidding or yeah. uh, okay if you're here in <laughs> if you're me mm -hmm. you i can step outside and see a tree so i was hoping that by noticing trees during the day and doing a reality check now not like every tree because then i would just be passed out on the road over here um so every time 
that my consciousness had slipped and then I, I would come back and I would see a tree and think, okay, it's probably been, I don't know, three minutes since I last did a reality check. I passed a lot of trees back there, but I'm just going to do it here. Uh, but I never remembered the trees in the yeah. dreams. Yeah, I feel like it's got to be something personal, something you can tote around. Anytime I have one of those symbols, uh, they tend to disappear whenever I realize what they are. That makes so, because you realize that it's not, that's the first thing you realize is not real. So it makes sense that it just disappears. So, like cop cars. For a little while, I had like three or four dreams about cop cars, just right. different stuff. Uh, so I was like, okay, anytime I see a cop car in real life, I'm going to do a reality check. Plus, this is a good way to look for cops. Uh, cause you know, I only drive the speed limit, right? Um, mm -hmm. so, but I haven't dreamed of cop cars since I made that realization. Interesting. Yeah. Subconscious doesn't like it when you like get it on the nose. It's a sneaky, yeah. a sneaky thing. Got to romance it somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Mine always tries to trick me. Like, it's like there's um, kind of like this barrier or like an obstacle course that's built up from my subconscious that'll generate these characters who try to convince me that I'm not in a dream. They argue with me, or they try to block my way. Do y'all have anything like that? <laughs> no, I don't talk to people in my dreams. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> not really. Dreams. Not all the time, anyway. Like not really blocking. Time. Not really blocking or anything. Uh, I mean, I've had a dream that. I asked to see my spirit guide. This was also one of those lucid dreams. I've done that. Uh, and I asked to see him twice because I read, you know, ask for twice and it's guaranteed that he will be there. Uh, and at that moment I was standing and there were like four or five different mm -hmm. guys all kind of standing there. So I asked again mm -hmm. and I realized which one was the right one. And then he took off. Like down that path, uh, weaving in uh, the trees and stuff, and I couldn't probably, keep up. He probably said, "Cool." He only asked to see me and nothing else. Interesting. So I mean, I guess he kind of blocked Come back. what uh, wait, wait. Oh. I was trying to do. Now she's a plant. Uh, yeah, she lives. All right. Sorry, I was trying to turn the brightness up on my screen. It got really dark all of a sudden. Oh, okay. But I'm also wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Understood. So am I. It makes it hard to stay on top. Can we talk about the fact that I'm a sadistic, like, domineering, evil, like, without any sort of conscious or remorse being who wants to conquer the universe? in my lucid dreams if I go too far. Uh, you're only showing the most repressed parts of yourself in your dream where it's safe. I guess. It's okay, I mean, Kronos. I was shocked. No, basically, yeah. Uh, like, I mean, because it started innocently enough, I guess, with my desire to be an immortal in the waking world. And so what I started trying to do was like, that's the little scenarios I would write where all be, they would all be like in the direction of how to attain immortality in that realm of my subconscious. I wanted to master 
my subconscious to control my body so that I, you know, don't age. I can just cure myself when I'm sick in a lucid dream. That's what I wanted to do. So there's this tendency to dominate my surroundings. That but I'm aren't aware. you, isn't that why you're always 27? Yeah. Are you 28 now, aren't you? Yeah, I did turn 28 last year. It was a rough year. But, <laughs> but, so, like, I would write out, like, that I need, I need an assistant to help me remember what I'm supposed to be doing there and to make things, help me make things happen. So I decided it was going to be Alfred from Batman because he's cool and that I'd have like kind of my dream realm bat cave where we'd work on the problem of immortality. And so it worked. Finally, like I got to where Alfred was there. I remembered when I'm losing, I'm like, oh, Alfred. And he shows up. And I'm like, oh, this is working. And I was getting to open up doors to things and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this room is going to represent, you know, this biological thing. Like, you know, my telomeres, then, you know, let's adjust their elasticity, stuff like that. But we never like got there. Like we never got all the way to making it happen. And then I had this dream where I was being chased by werewolves. And like it was like a cornfield, like typical horror movie. Oh, I've got like, are you all there? Yeah, we're here. I got a little notice. We're just listening. Yeah, werewolves. That said, my internet connection was weak. Wait, what? I said, so you're being chased by werewolves? Yeah, being chased by werewolves, and I realize, hey. This is not real. Werewolves aren't real. What gave it away? The werewolves? Yeah, just the fact <laughs> that I was running away from werewolves struck me as not right. And so then, of course, I immediately kick into I'm going to dominate my subconscious mode. Because I used to be friendly with people. Like, you're a manifestation of my subconscious. What do you represent? Blah, blah, blah. But now I'm just trying to, like break their wills and make them do things and so i go into this house and like people are just running and screaming and getting torn up by werewolves behind me and i'm just like whatever <laughs> bye uh, yeah i've got stuff to do in this house <laughs> and so um uh, i go in the house and i'm like all right how do i how do i do this how do i get my immortality and so I decide I'll summon Commander Data from Star Trek because he always solves ridiculous problems in the span of an hour. Like, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. This robot will figure it out. So I made Commander Data, and it was hard to make it happen for some reason. Like, sometimes it's hard to really believe in the dreamness of everything and that I can make anything happen. But I usually get there after I try, but he shows up and walks out of this other room. Cause that's what I thought would be easier. Is he's gonna walk out of that room. He's already in there. I don't have to conjure him. So he walks out and I'm like, okay, Data, that wall, if you take that painting off of that wall, there's a computer terminal in there that accesses my subconscious. So I need you to get in there and program my body to be immortal and he's like okay i can do that and so then he starts typing in and he like plugs something into it from his head and like then i woke up so frustration well. but that's like because it leads into the next time i was asleep and got you know thirsty for power over my surroundings that was the epic freaking lucid dream where like i think i've told you all about my little cat frenemy in the lucid dreams right yes he's always like trying to like trick me or lead me away from stuff and stop me from exercising my god power 
I think we talked about him a little in the last. Yeah, we did. We episode. did. I just want to make sure you all know what I'm talking about before I. Yeah. But like, I don't know how much of that. I mean, we did have a little bit of a hiccup the first thirty minutes. True. Well, no, it was it, a little difficult. It was, wasn't it? But like, so the cat's there. This is before I killed him, accidentally, and I've never seen him since. But he's there. Maybe he's got probably <laughs> more than one life being a cat. Didn't you know. attempt to kill him more than this one time though? Like, no, wasn't that seriously, every I day? did. Like. Or, you know, I would just break him, like, this dream. This dream. It's like, this dream I woke up and I'm like, I don't know who I am. (laughs) Because I had, because here's what happened. So the longer I was in the dream, the less I remembered this reality. And it was one of those, like, my trouble with lucid dreams is that they don't last very long. You know, I start something, but then I'll wake up. And so um, then I have little tricks. Like I'll just look down at my feet and I'll say increase lucidity, which sounds silly and simplistic, but it works. And then everything gets a little bit more solid if I'm starting to wake up. I was told that there's a few things you can do, like the spinning one. Like you close your eyes and spin is supposed to be really good for increasing lucidity. Oh, that's uh, cool. that's good. I'll have to try that. <clears throat> I get stuck in the spinning mode, and I like being pretending I'm a planet on an Sweet. axis. <laughs> it's fun. You should try it. Ooh, also like stretching when you're dreaming. You're so much more bendy in a dream. Yeah, <laughs> no, crazy. seriously. Like if you can't read something, and you're just like. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Oh, wait, but I have to finish that epic. So, okay. So I'm doing just my normal dream stuff where I'm just kind of like interviewing people, like trying to figure out what they mean and just more and more confirming that I'm a god here. I can do anything I want in this dream realm. This is reality. This is no different than the other reality. And then I slowly start forgetting the other reality. Like, I don't really remember after a while. It's like I've been there for years. And I don't remember the dream I had anymore. That was this life. Like, I'm just all about this world. And I have all these godly powers. And I mean, this is what freaks me out. Because I'm just like walking around the beach one day. And I look up to the sky and I'm like, I'm going to conquer the universe. (laughs) And so the cat is trying to stop me, right? (laughs) The cat's like trying to trick me and lead me somewhere that I can't launch a universal campaign of conquest and terror from. (laughs) So perhaps the cat's the hero in its dreams. I don't know, but, you know, I finally, I'm like, you know what, Cat, watch, I'm going to build an army, like, I have an army, and, like, then, bam, all of these incredibly buff, scantily clad dudes with spears show up, and I'm like, you know what, they're not sexy enough, (laughs) but, like, I made them, like, the entire army is just dead sexy, and um if you're gonna have an army right right i know because i'm gonna conquer the universe and this is all i remember like this is literally the only world i know and i know that i'm dreaming still i'm still lucy that's the whole point it's just that i don't really remember it's like being in neverland too long and like Uh, yep you went really hard in on a fantasy yeah and like So then, you know, I enjoy the soldiers, I conquer, I pillage, I destroy, I conquer Earth in very little time. And then the cat's like leading some rebellion and trying to like get me. And I'm like, you can't, you literally can't rebel. I'm God and just made his whole army disappear. 
And then I captured him like, and I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of you being a cat. You're a hot guy now. And then I had him like tied up and thrown in a tent. And I went in there and I'm like questioning him. Like he's tied up to a post because I'm just torturing him because I hate that guy. The stupid cat who's always trying to like foil my plans. And uh, like he's just, he, he never would talk in the whole thing. And I finally got him to talk. And that's when I learned the cat can talk. In future dreams, he could still talk. And it was freaky. Because, like, this man who's tied up to the post finally starts answering my questions. And his voice is like this cat-sounding, just squeaky so, little voice. It was creepy. Was but it like was that little like, cat thing from, a? <clears throat> was it Thundercats? Snarr. No, he wasn't that bad. Like it sounded like an actual cat. Like if your actual cat were meowing and it started mm-hmm. to form words, it was just freaky. So like, but I was, yeah, that's what it was. Like I couldn't remember like where I came from, but I knew this was a weird kind of world, and I was just questioning the cat because no one had been able to tell me what this world is. Like, where are we? What is this place called? And um, I finally, I mean, I, I was a monster. I had my, like, soldiers beat this guy until he finally broke and talked. And I'm like, where are we? What is this place called? And he just kind of looked up at me all hatefully. And he's all, demonite. I'm like, demonite? What does that mean? And, like, then I'm like, okay, well, Thanks for that. And then, you know, I left him to go conquer the universe. And then I woke up. And then I had to Google like, it as a suffix, I-T-E, like, what does that mean? Demon, it. And so basically what the cat was telling me is that the place was called of the demon. I'm like, okay, so that's the most epic lucid dream I ever had. Cool. So you're like dream Satan. Got yeah, it. like no, because then I was like, who am I? Because when I forget myself, that's what I become. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that who I actually am at the core? Because it doesn't fit with like the way I live my life. Well, Earth's a trip, right? Pretty much. I mean, literally, like, we're traveling through space. On a floating rock. Floating, spinning, wet rock. Aliens, man. They're real. What about aliens? We're aliens. I think so, anyway. They're real. Yeah, isn't aliens, like, subjective yeah exactly like everyone's an alien I mean, depending on where you are like when we go to the I moon suppose we're aliens. It, it really depends on how deep yeah only if you're born of the moon like when the first child is born in on mars uh-huh. is that child going to be totally different or is the evolution not quick enough for that to be totally different. I don't know. Who knows about like what gravitational forces will have effect on pregnancies and whatnot? Yeah. Because I mean, being in space, like astronauts come back and they're taller. That's true. Like it even if you're already born, it can affect your physiology, just the difference in gravity and stuff. Yeah. But like in- is the the pressure gonna make their head expand or get smaller right. or like hypothetically like if a person is born in the lower gravity of mars and grows up like that's what their bodies will adapt to like you know like our strength our musculature adapts to the gravity of the planet we're on so if they were to come to earth the gravity would crush them kids born on mars if they're raised under that gravity if they don't you know, manage some sort of artificial gravity. 
but that would be inefficient, I think, to try to, you know, colonize a whole planet and spread artificial gravity all over the whole planet. I think it's more likely they're going to adapt to the atmosphere and not be able to survive the gravity of a trip to Earth. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, that's... Earth's heavy. Things, though. <laughs> Very so dense, <laughs> but it, it still doesn't make sense why we have our moon, though. What do you mean? Like the moon size, uh, apparently. Let's let's throw that out there. I'm no expert, but oh, are we going to conspiracy theory? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can go to conspiracy theory. Now, all I'm going to say is that the moon should be a lot smaller for the size of the Earth. To have a moon that large for a rock this small is very rare mm -hmm. uh, because the gravity is shouldn't be, for a moon that big, it should have heavier gravity. Uh, it barely has gravity, right? Like, that is interesting. Jupiter, is that the big one? Um, a lot of, Jupiter, is that the big planet? Yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, that they just like found too much moons. moons. Out there. How many uh, moons do they have now? Over fifty. Wow. Yeah. So, a lot of those are a lot smaller in size compared to our moons. That's right. true, and our moon is just perfect enough to block out the sun. Sometimes. True. Cause... That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But again, I'm no expert. Right. And, you know, like we don't like I thought I understood gravity, but you hear physicists talk and they'll all say we don't really know what gravity is. So I don't really know how we're supposed if we don't know what gravity is, then how do we calculate what the gravity will be on another planet or on the moon? Like we knew before we got to the moon what the gravity was going to be like. So I don't understand. I thought it had to do with like mass and speed you know i mean i i don't know i don't know much uh about that i know that every galaxy has a huge black hole in the middle uh which kind of freaks me out i know i met her like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah she wasn't very nice no well i mean she held this place together though didn't she no. Still does. I guess. I mean, she didn't devour us. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> Black holes are just like the big trash can button on your computer. Just like, <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird? Okay, what if like simulation theory is true and we're in a digital simulation? And what if that is what a black hole is? Like it's just hitting delete. And we're just experiencing it over billions of years. Like different files get deleted in the folder. The universe is the folder. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's very strange to think about. Yeah. Yeah, makes you wonder when the last time they updated. Oh, their drivers or something. Right. I just recently watched a video. Oh, that happened to me once. Yeah, it, it's strange. This digital age we're in. Uh, what no, did you see um, the ending? Or no, tell us the whole thing. That would make more sense. I'm confused. So am I. Tell us about the video you watched. Oh, that's what what, what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, the video was about McDonald's ice cream machines being broken. Oh. Like, you, you know how everybody, you know, you can go to any McDonald's and ask for an ice cream, and nine times out of ten, it'll be broken. Uh, and he went around and he found out exactly why. Why? Because the company that makes it has a sister company that will sell a product that'll fix it. Uh, oh. Well, so then why but, do they keep buying from them? 
an age-old agreement. But it, it was, I'm just saying, it's a good video. Uh, maybe look it up. That was, I don't remember what we were talking about before this. This was kind of off track, I guess. Zoos or something. Uh, yeah. No. From Glenn being a, like an all-consuming universe destroyer, conqueror thing, and then to a, whatever yeah. we just talked about. Whoops. That's Please. okay. I'm a I'm a secret agent and I like <laughs> finding my target. You're very dark. You're and dispatching all dark. them. Everyone getting so dark. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like it's hard to see the screen anyway with sunglasses. This this feels like a ridiculous thing to do. Why would anybody do this? Do what? Put on sunglasses. We're inside. So many boxes. Boxes. What's going on? Like, I'm just looking at my screen and being all confused, which I shouldn't do. Yeah, I think we're all kind of doing that. Like, are y'all seeing three boxes or just one screen at a time? Three boxes. Okay. We talked about this. Yeah, but I've just noticed like this yellow frame goes around. Does it happen on y'all's too? Yes. Oh, does to it? Yeah. I only see one of you at a time and it's whoever's talking because I think that's how the software works here. <laughs> yeah, so I don't that's know. That's kind of how I started. I didn't like it, so I switched to the box form. Uh, uh, I was just getting lost because I felt like I was watching a movie, you know. Cut scene. <laughs> Interesting. Pretty you much. are watching a movie while being in a movie all at the same time. I'm aware I'm in a movie. <laughs> La. This episode is going to get released theatrically. <laughs> Speaking of episodes, do you have any more plastic passions for us? No. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I can talk about premonition dreams if y'all want. Ooh, go for it. Okay, so my like most recent one happened like last year. I had a dream that some lady was driving down the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> like two days later, there's this crazy lady driving down the wrong side of my road towards me. And I'm like, uh, uh, this lady. <laughs> that was one premonition dream. Interesting. I've never had anything like that. No. I bet you but, could if you intended to. That I can remember, you know, because. Mm -hmm. But. <sighs> like, yeah. Well, just always be on the watch out for foreshadowing. Right. Think in about real life and in dreams. Yeah, true. True, true. Like, a lot of people in my family dream about people getting sick and dying right before they get sick or die. You must have a tight-knit family. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That side of it, anyway. Everybody's into everybody's business. Oh, well. I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's one way to show that you care. Yeah. I'm going to get up all up in your business because I so, love you. Yeah, so I mean, it does make sense if that had something to do with a tight-knit family. That those folks have that a lot. My mom would have that and call people up to find out how sick they are. <laughs> and my uncle's mom used to always know when people were dead, she'd have a dream. Like her husband died. And she got a phone call and she didn't even let them talk. She just said, I know, he's dead. <laughs> and she just woke up from a dream, and that's exactly what they were calling to tell her. Hmm. Really weird. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Y'all are just so... Oh, I what might have had a dream about the borders shutting down when I was living in Australia I would always have these nightmares of being stuck in America 
I have that nightmare. I had that nightmare for four years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they stopped after I came here, and then it actually did shut down. I was like, why would you look at that? Huh. Oh, way to go. You're the one who made it happen. <laughs> I just saw it coming. Oh, well. This well, guy. good for you. <laughs> Good on I you. guess a big warning for what how could I have ever prepared for anything like that right yeah I hope that doesn't happen again anytime soon maybe yeah. we just keep you from ever sleeping again <sighs> whoa the light oh why do you have to start that Amanda I'm sorry start what we're talking about dreaming and like it gets me really excited to go to bed she turned on the light as she yawned so that everyone who gets triggered to yawn by hearing about a yawn or thinking about a yawn is now going to yawn yeah, yeah. I'm but so only if they like it so me. much i read you can only like avoid that if you're psychotic <laughs> Yeah, or you, like, really hate the other person. If you really hate the other person? Yeah, I do it all the time. I must be psychotic. Yeah. Maybe. Or you just hate I everyone. Mean, we didn't I don't hate people. Dreams. I don't hate Amanda. She just yawned. Well, you also you. don't like her. You didn't yawn back. I haven't yawned either yet. We must so I feel it there. It, it's, it's there. It's because you're, I know you're psychotic. Yeah, well, I've seen your sure. grocery list. <laughs> Not really. I just okay. Funny funny like you me. Beans. <laughs> what? Everybody likes beans. <laughs> Not that much. If you say so. <laughs> beans have lots of power. <laughs> They're very magical. <laughs> but yeah. no, like literally, the only three things on your grocery list to prepare for a month were beans, Captain Crunch, and condoms. That's it. Like, what is wrong with you? Man, that's a bachelor list. Except you're, you're not a bachelor. Hey, hey, exactly. Hey. But let me cut. Yeah, I have no reason. Condoms. I have no reason for that. <laughs> now everybody knows you're lying. But I mean, what would it say? Like, if somebody did have that as their grocery list, would you just assume they were a serial killer? <laughs> I'd been like, um, this person doesn't like very much. <laughs> but very simple things. Okay. But does it mean they just go out to eat a lot? Like, they just happened to have bought this in the last month. Maybe. Because they maybe, were maybe eating with friends. Paper. They didn't buy I mean, no. You gotta work for that. <laughs> Don't need anything else. Are you living life. van life? What? Are you living van life? Not yet. You know, in a van? Because that's what you would be doing. I mean, maybe most of those anyways. So you don't need to buy toilet paper. But I don't know. Not when you have Captain Crunch. Yeah. You can't just use a fistful of Captain Crunch. Keep you going. <laughs> you can't even buy any milk for the cereal, me. which is fine. I use dry. Wait. Someone spoke. Which one? What? Said whatever makes you happy what on your shopping you? list. <laughs> uh, weird. Wait, what were we talking about? Murder? Mm. Well, Wait we up. were talking about insanity. Oh, right. So we're talking about our lives. <laughs> insanity. It happens. A lot, but it's, you know, subjective. Sanity is subjective. I don't think there's such thing as a universal concept of sanity. We're it's when you stop questioning your sanity. 
Yeah. That's... Yeah, my shrink was always telling me that um, if I was insane, I wouldn't be questioning it. <laughs> she had to tell me that a lot. <laughs> Pretty sad. Anyway. You should have it on your wall, like one of the live, love, laugh posters. <laughs> Just like always question yourself. Yeah. You're only nuts fine. if you aren't questioning whether or not you're nuts. Always question your reality. Yes. That's what the meaning was, Glenn. Hey, true. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ooh, ooh that a tightens. good mantra. You huh? actually said it earlier. A good mantra to have in like in life is to like remain lucid or ooh. become more lucid. Yeah. I like that. And see what happens. Because it's true. Just always be lucid. Asleep awake, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Question oh, that's that's always being in the now. Always. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Oh, but you'll have to solve the riddle real quick. Oh, Lord. Epilogue. Okay, so uh, tell us how it... Unravel it. I have no idea. Oh, can I color code them? Ooh. I mean, you can, but the thing is, you can only color code up to the end of your room and you can only start in the other room like you 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 can't see the wires that go between the rooms so you can color code that room but mm -hmm. how are you going to know what color goes to what for the other room because you're going to have to color code that room as well That's so how do you figure true. out which light is which no, no guesses. Uh, by by remote viewing. Up. No, not remote viewing. It's a little bit more simple than that. Anybody can do this one. Those kind of my skills. Thirty minutes back. Remote viewing is less destructive. Yeah, you then tearing only... the whole wall apart and like following the wires. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. can't do that. I can have data do it, right? Yeah, no, you can have Commander no. Data do it. That's what you do. You conjure Commander Data. Not in this reality. You can solve this ridiculous problem. Because he can. And he will. And under an hour. But you have to conjure. You have to be able to conjure him. But I, I, anybody can do this one. You don't need to be able to conjure someone to do it for you. It'll take 30 minutes max, and then you'll be on your way. 30 minutes. I don't, 30 minutes I don't care. I'm just going to leave. I don't care if the lights are on or off. I'm going to quit that job. Well, <laughs> you're stuck in this room until you complete the job. You're in purgatory waiting. And this is your task. I hate this riddle. <laughs> you want to know the answer? Yeah. What is for the first life? Oh, what's the answer? Okay. So all you do, you go into this room. You turn one light switch on. Wait 15 minutes, turn the second light switch on. Wait 15 minutes, turn them all off, and go into the other room. <laughs> Touch the light bulbs. The one that's uh, on for 30 minutes is going to be rather warm. The one that's been on for 15 minutes is going to be slightly warm. The one that you didn't touch at all, is going to be cold. Therefore, you know what light goes to what. Then you get to go on your way. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> your riddles make me irrationally angry. Yeah, just mildly. I mean, like, because there's a potential that both lights would reach the same temperature. True. Just I mean, possibly. But I mean, if are you're dealing with like 100 watt. What kind of lights are they? I'm talking about like the the lights that are in a a gym, you know, like they take forever the to warm up. Lights. 
whatever they are, they take forever to warm up or they used to. Huh. You turn on the gym lights and they'd have to warm up for a minute and then they'd get bright. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. You meant the church lights. Those two. Oh, yeah. Did those? No, those came right on, I think, in the church gym. Mm. I could be wrong. No, I remember them way more creepier than that. And just well, you know, that door jiggle as well. Creepy. What? Didn't that door jiggle as well? To the gym? Yeah. Get more well, than you paying attention. The door would oh. open and close. <laughs> That's a topic for another time. That's another story. Oh, yes. Shall be told another time. Let's go paranormal investigate the church again. Boy. Any paranormal investigator would have a field day in that place. Yeah. Well, maybe that can be the topic of our next conversation. No. Nah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, but yeah, I think we've done a show. It's almost an hour and a half, and it takes 30 years to upload these things. <laughs> so, well, I think we covered, they'll get to see it. I think we covered the topic. I would agree. I'm proud of us. I think Mostly on topics, except for me. I mean, we all got off topic, but then we came back. And then you made us do a riddle. And then Again. we started talking about paranormal stuff. And then we, had to solve it. we said goodbye. <laughs> but and then we're still here. How southern of us. I know, totally. <laughs> oh, well. Goodbye. Thanks for being on my little show. Thanks for having me. Nice totally. seeing y'all. Totally. Y'all have a lovely life. See you later. This has been Conversations in Sunglasses. Subscribe, like, below, and whatever. Bye-bye. <laughs>